MCP2515 Standalone CAD Controller by Microchip Technology. Welcome to the training module on MCP2515 Standalone CAD Controller. In this training module, we will discuss the basic features, layers, operation, and applications of this device. CAN stands for Controller Area Network. Microchip Technologies MCP2515 is a standalone CAN controller that implements the CAN specification version 2.0b. It is capable of transmitting and receiving both standard and extended data as well as remote frames. The MCP2515 has acceptance masks and six acceptance filters that are used to filter out unwanted messages, thereby reducing the host MCU's overhead. This device interfaces with microcontrollers via an industry standard serial peripheral interface, or SPI for short. CAN is being designed into a wide range of applications that use command and control networks. Some of these applications include industrial control, maritime electronics, avionics and aerospace electronics, UPSs, heavy machinery, and earth moving equipment. Others include factory automation, medical equipment, exercise equipment, elevator control and automotives, just to mention a few. The CAN serial bus protocol is a high-speed, reliable communication protocol for applications requiring robust communications at bit rates reaching 1 megabits per second. This is the block diagram of the CAN controller. The CAN module handles all functions for receiving and transmitting messages on the CAN bus. Messages are transmitted by first loading the appropriate message buffer and control registers. Transmission is initiated by using control register bits via the SPI interface or by using the transmit enable pins. The control logic block controls the setup and operation of the MCP2515 by interfacing to the other blocks in order to pass information and control. Interrupt pins are provided to allow greater system flexibility. The MCU interfaces to the device via the SPI interface. Writing to and reading from all registers is accomplished using standard SPI read and write commands in addition to specialized SPI commands. Connectivity within a vehicle is dominated today by two main network protocols. They are CAN or Controller Area Network and the other is LIN or Local Interconnect Network. CAN utilizes a robust, high-speed protocol, usually linking major nodes or subsystems within the vehicle, such as ABS, airbag, powertrain, and suspension control modules. LIN is a low-speed, single-wire network that usually links nodes within a vehicle subsystem, such as body electronics, headlight controls, and occupant detection. Most network applications follow a layered approach to system integration. As a result, a standard was created. This standard is known as the ISO Open System Interconnection or OSI Network Layering Reference Model. The CAN protocol itself implements most of the lower two layers of this reference model. This enabled system designers to adapt and optimize the communication protocol on multiple media for maximum flexibility. The MCP2515 has three transmit and two receive buffers, two acceptance masks, one for each receive buffer, and a total of six acceptance filters. The heart of the engine is the finite state machine or FSM. The FSM is a sequencer that controls the sequential data stream between the TXRX shift register, the CRC register, and the bus line. The FSM also controls the error management logic or EML and the parallel data stream between the TXRX shift registers and the buffers. The cyclic redundancy check or CRC register generates the cyclic redundancy check code which is transmitted after either the control field or the data field and is used to check the CRC field of incoming messages. The MCP2515 supports standard data frames, extended data frames, and remote frames as defined in the CAN 2.0b specification. A message in the standard format begins with the start bit, start off frame. This is followed by the arbitration field, 
which contains the identifier and the RTR or remote transmission request bit, which indicates whether it is a data frame or a request frame without any data bytes. The control field contains the IDE or identifier extension bit, which indicates either standard format or extended format. The data field ranges from 0 to 8 bytes in length and is followed by the CRC field, which is used as a frame security check for detecting bit errors. The ACK field comprises the ACK slot and the ACK delimiter. In the extended CAN data frame, the SOF bits is followed by the arbitration field, which consists of 32 bits. The first 11 bits are the most significant bits of the 29-bit identifier. These 11 bits are followed by the Substitute Remote Request or SRR bit, which is defined to be recessive. The SRR bit is followed by the IDE bit, which is recessive to denote an extended CAN frame. The SRR bit in an extended CAN frame must be recessive to allow the assertion of a dominant RTR bit by a node that is sent in a standard CAN remote frame. The SRR and IEE bits are followed by the remaining 18 bits of the identifier and the remote transmission request bit. The CAN protocol does not use acknowledgement messages, but instead signals any errors that occur. For error detection, the CAN protocol implements three mechanisms at the message level. They are cyclic redundancy check, frame check, and ACK errors. The CAN protocol also implements two mechanisms for error detection at the bit level. They are monitoring and bit stuffing. The device also includes two full receive buffers with multiple acceptance filters for each. There is also a separate message assembly buffer or MAB that acts as a third receive buffer. The MAB is always committed to receiving the next message from the bus. The MAB assembles all message received. The remaining two receive buffers called RxBO and RxB1 can receive a complete message from the protocol engine via the MAB. The MCU can access one buffer whilst the other buffer is available for message reception or for holding a previously received message. The CAN protocol uses non-return-to-zero coding, which does not encode a clock within the data stream. Therefore, the received clock must be recovered by the receiving nodes and synchronized to the transmitter's clock. Each of the segments that make up a bit time are made up of integer units called time quanta or TQ. The length of each time quantum is based on the oscillator period. The base TQ equals twice the oscillator period. The synchronization segment is the first segment in the NBT and is used to synchronize the nodes on the bus. This segment is fixed at 1 TQ. All devices on the CAN bus must use the same bit rate. For the different clock frequencies of the individual devices, the bit rate has to be adjusted by approximately setting the baud rate per prescaler and the number of time quanta in each segment. The MCP2515 has eight sources of interrupts. The CAN interrupt E register contains the individual interrupt enabled pits for each interrupt source. The CAN interrupt F register contains the corresponding interrupt flag bit for each interrupt source. When an interrupt occurs, the interrupt pin is driven low by the MCP2515 and will remain low until the interrupt is cleared by the MCU. An interrupt cannot be cleared if their respective condition still prevails. The CAN interrupt F flags are read-write and an interrupt can be generated by the MCU set in any of these bits provided the associated CAN interrupt E bit is also set. The MCP2515 has five modes of operation. Configuration mode is automatically selected after power up. A reset can be entered from any other mode by setting the control register rec op bits. When configuration mode is entered, all error counters are cleared. Sleep mode is used to minimize the current consumption of the device. The SPI interface remains active for reading even when the MCP2515 is in sleep mode, allowing access to all registers. Listen-only mode provides a means for the MCP2515 to receive all messages. This mode can be used for bus monitor applications or for detecting the board rate in the hot plug-in situations.